one. Thank you so much, Steve. And, you know, it's always a privilege to be here and to share with every single one of you. Um, the leadership here, and unlike many other places, is dedicated to equipping every single one of you to walk in the fullness of who God wants you to be. And if you're here and you commit to that, you will be transformed by it. It's the way that it is. Amen. Thank you, man. So this morning, um, we're going to be talking about some things. But before we do that, is it okay if I just um, deliver a prophetic word quickly? Are you guys all okay with that? Rain and Louise, can you guys please stand up? Um, I really felt pressed on my heart um, in the last couple of days. The Lord speaking to me about you guys. And he kept bringing up this picture um, for me of Peter standing on the boat calling to Jesus, saying to Jesus, if it's you, I will come. And I really feel that that's a place kind of like where you are, Rain. It's like you, you want the supernatural so desperately, but yet you're looking at Jesus and say, I'll come if you call me. And it's almost like you're, you've taken that step before out of the boat and you've actually stood on the water and you've walked on the water. You know what it's like to walk on water, but you also know what it's like to start sinking into the sea. And I really felt the Lord speaking to me about both of you in this area, that as you go, you're going to have fresh opportunities to step out of the boat. You're going to have fresh opportunities to step into the supernatural and to look beyond what you see. Because as lush and green as people have tried to make out where you're going is, the Spirit says you are entering a dry land spiritually. But He has set you there as fountains of living water so that you may bring fresh life to a dry land. And I just felt that was the word from the Lord for you this morning. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So um, as you guys know, we're talking about renewing the mind in all kinds of different areas. How many of you know that if you don't change your thinking, you can't change your behavior? So um, right believing um, executes right action. You cannot just pretend to act right for very long. If your thinking doesn't change, you will eventually revert back to bad action because of your bad thinking. Amen? But when you establish true thinking, then your true thinking will actually pr produce true action. Amen? Okay, and I've explained this before to people that you can, yes, you can, you can live a lie. In other words, you can choose to believe things that are not true about yourself and others and live as if that's true for you. That's right. And that means that every single person here has the capacity to empower lies or to empower the truth. And so it's an important thing that we find out what God has to say about things because not, none of our opinions matter. God's opinion matters. Amen? And so as we get started, I'm just reminding you, we know that God will always has existed in the unseen, uncreated, and everything He created is in the unseen created and in the seen created. And we live in the seen created, but we are anchored to the unseen uncreated, in the sense that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, and so we do not live from the seen created, we live from the unseen uncreated, in Him, being hidden in Him, and so we can execute authority from His perspective rather than trying to fight our way out of situations as long as we have entered a perspective that is in agreement with the way that He thinks so that we think correctly about the situations we face. Amen? All right. So, who knows what that is? Is it on the screen? Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, you guys, can you see all the way down there? No. Okay, so this is a multi-lane freeway, right? Uh, it's going and coming. There's off-ramps and on-ramps. How many of you guys are familiar with that? Yeah, I'm sure everyone, right? And so we all drive everywhere, so we all know how roads work. Am I right? Okay, so um, this morning, I'm going to be talking to you about, number one, I'm, I'm assuming that all of you have taken the on-ramp onto believing in Jesus. Amen. So we, we, we're not talking about level zero or lane zero. That's before you even enter the freeway. 
We're talking about you're on the freeway, and now you can choose how fast you want to go. Amen? Some of us, we go faster than others. That's fine. Am I right? But some of us uh, go slower than others, and that's also fine. It's just all up to your temperament and up to how willing you are for the Lord to actually work in and through you, right? It's all about your willingness to participate in His divine work in you as the Holy Spirit conforms you to the image of Jesus. And so what I want to talk to you is lane one. And that's when you just come onto the ramp, right? You still are in a place of basically not knowing much about the promises of God. You don't know everything that He's uh, provided for you. And so you are still in a place of um, limited understanding and the renewing of your mind hasn't yet really started. Has anyone ever found themselves in a place like that? Yes, we, we all have. Am I right? When we all started, and sometimes even after years of being a Christian, I still felt that I didn't understand many things. And, and it only was until I started really pressing into the truth that my mind began to be renewed. So sometimes it takes more effort than just coming to church on a Sunday. And if you don't even come to church on a Sunday, then that's even less, right? Because you need community and you need to celebrate with us the things that God's doing and learn the things from the Word. Amen. So people who are in the first lane, we call that the slowest lane, are people who depend on natural means. In other words, instead of depending, depending on the Spirit and the Spirit's provision, they depend on what they can taste, touch, and feel and what they know can be provided for them in the natural realm. Okay? And I'm talking about this primarily within the aspect of your health today. Okay? And you might say, well, my body is physical. What has that got to do with anything spiritual? And I will explain to you as we go along why I say that. So I'm going to give you some examples of people who are in different lanes. And then at the end, I'm going to show you how to operate from the place that God has created you to operate from. Is that cool? Okay. So lane one, people who depend on natural means only. In other words, every single problem you have physically in your body, you are only dependent on physical, natural means. That means you, you only go to the doctor, you never consult with God, you only take pills, you only rely on medicine, and you only rely on everything physical. That's it. And there are a lot of people who are there, even if they have grown spiritually in other areas, there are people who are still slow in this lane. It doesn't mean that you're a bad Christian. It just means that you don't necessarily know what you need to know about where you are seated so that you can live from the place that God wants you to live from. Amen. So I'm not here to condemn you today. I'm here to challenge you to uh, put on your indicator and change lanes. Oh, I thought I would have got a better response, especially from you guys. Amen? Amen? This is a Christian church. We're in Africa. We say amen. 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 Hallelujah. You, know, you go on mission trips and they say amen way louder than you guys say amen. You think that the truth means something to them. Hallelujah. Okay, so anyway. So lane one is the place where no one wants to stay if you're a believer. You want to start learning how to change lanes, okay? So when you change lanes to lanes two, this is normally people who come to an understanding that God has made provision for their health supernaturally. But they only access this provision once they have exhausted all natural means. In other words, they're like this lady here in Mark 5, verse 24 to 34. Okay? And he went with him, and a great crowd followed Jesus and thronged about him. And there was, you saw I put Jesus in there for you, so you know who it's talking about. Eh? Okay. And they thronged about him, and there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years. Now, guys, a 12-year discharge of blood, that is really bad. That is not nice. I would never wish that on my worst enemy. It's not a nice thing at all. Amen. And, who ha and she had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. No one's had that experience in the modern day scientific world at all, right? I'll, I'll leave that up to your own. Amen. But this woman did. Amen. She spent all that she had and she was worse off 
because all she relied on was natural means. But here's the good news. Even if you're there, what did she do? She heard that there was a man named Jesus who was setting people free. Amen? The sooner you come to God, the better. Amen? The sooner you come to God, the better. But yes, she was, after spending all her money, after 12 years, yes, she was, and she was desperate. Guys, this lady was desperate because she was willing to die to get healed. Because she was as good as dead to herself already. Because she pressed into a crowd that if she had not gotten healed, they would have stoned her to death. Because that was the law concerning women who were bleeding. They are unclean. That's the law. Praise God we don't live under the law. Amen? So before you come and, and, and try and tell people to get circumcised or have the Sabbath or anything like that, just think about the other things that are also included in the law. I mean, most of you shaved here. You all broke the law. I'm the only one that's kept it. The reality is this, guys. We don't live under the Jewish law. We live under the laws of heaven, which is a law of liberty. Amen? And we look into the perfect word of God and we see what manner of being we are when we see Jesus. Amen? So now, she grew worse and she heard reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, who said? Amen. She said. So this is something she decided. Am I right? Okay. Notice there's no um, segue into a prophetic vision. There's no segue into someone else giving her a particular instruction. She comes to this conclusion by herself. She says, if I touch even his garment, I will be made well. You know, this woman causes a massive theological issue for many people. Because she destroys the so-called notion of God's method. Because she decided the method. And she destroys the notion of God's timing. Because she decided the timing. She decided when and how she was going to get healed. Isn't that amazing? Watch. And immediately... The flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And the disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing up against you, yet you say, Who has touched me? They're thinking, Are you, are you like, slow, Jesus? Can't, can't you see all these people are touching you? Who, who are you talking about? Amen? He hasn't had enough water today. And Jesus, okay, and he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Amen? So you can see here that even if you are on lane two, right, there is always a option to find someone who is operating in a foster lane to help you get the results you need. Amen? All right. Does that make sense, guys? Hallelujah. You guys are the best. All right. So now we turn our indicators on and we switch over to the third lane. And these are people who have decided to trust God's word concerning the provision of their health, but are still learning to overcome their doubts in certain areas, and they occasionally supplement their faith with practical aids. And I'm not talking about level 1 aids, I'm talking about level 3 aids. And those kind of aids will be aids that help you establish spiritual principles in your lives through physical means. Um, how many of you have read the scripture that says... Um, that we drink deep from the well of our salvation. You've never heard that? Oh, okay. So, if you drink deep from the well of your salvation, that means you can draw water from the well of your salvation. Am I right? So, there's even sometimes I've been in meetings where we have pretended to draw and drink from that well 
in order to physically engage the Holy Spirit and experience the presence of the Holy Spirit. Have you guys ever done anything like that? Hey? All right. So there's a practical, physical thing that you do in order to engage a spiritual truth. Amen? And this is why Jesus left us with this particular thing that Paul talks about here in 1 Corinthians. One of the best ways to get yourself anchored in health is to participate in recognizing what Jesus has done for you on a daily basis. Because when you keep your mind on Him, your mind's at perfect peace. Amen? All right. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. And you might say, yo, that sounds very heavy, Mark. Okay, let me explain this. If something can give you a benefit, but only if you recognize it, then when you don't recognize it, it doesn't give you the benefit. And so when you don't recognize it, and it doesn't give you the benefit, you don't get the benefit that you need. And so because of that, many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. In other words, when you eat the bread and you don't recognize that this is the body of Jesus that was broken for you, not physically, but spiritually as an anchor in the physical, when you participate in that, you remember what Jesus did for you and you thank him for it like it's already done. Am I right? And so because of that, what you do by faith is you activate that provision that has been made for you and then you seal it with drinking the blood which reminds you that sin cannot stop the healing that has already been given to you. So it's a sealed deal. Amen? So if you suffer with anything in your body, right, one of the best ways to get healed is to start having communion daily and to start recognizing what the elements are for and to have a praise party. Amen? And if you do that regularly, I mean, I know one of my friends who's done that on a very regular basis, and he is super healthy, and he's in his late 60s. And he's super healthy, super strong. So it's, it's, it's definitely something that can benefit you if you apply your faith to it. Amen? All right, so they use that. Now, level, lane four is where people who are applying God's word for their health daily and are walking in the blessing of divine health the majority of the time for themselves and seeing healing, healing for others. That means you're still facing attacks. You're still having things come knocking at your door, but you're overcoming these things before they get a foothold in your life. Amen? And when you see other people who are ill, because you understand that God has made provision for your healing, you heal them. Okay. It says these signs will follow those who believe. And we'll get to those just, that just now. Keep that in mind. These signs will follow those who? Okay, does it say that those who believe will follow after these signs? Or does it say these signs will follow those who believe? So that means you should be a sign that makes other people wonder. Amen? Okay, so these people here have basically begun to understood what God has made provision for. And they're walking it out and demonstrating it as often as they can. Okay. So we're finally going to get to the best level, which is where you all should live from, right? How many of you, when you go onto the freeway, you indicate all the way over to 120? Anybody? Now, don't be shy now. Come now. What the heck? You think we're living in... Are we, are we in some kind of corporate meeting here? <laughs> this is a family meeting. Okay. So if you do that, then guess what? You get to go fast to where you need to go, and you get there much quicker. Isn't that right? Whereas you might have someone in the 60 lane who should actually still be in the 40 lane. <laughs> Amen? And, and, and you might have someone in the 80 lane that should be in the 60 lane. But when you're in 120, it's like the cars are going fast enough there. You don't mess around. Am I right? At least they're going 140 most of the time. Right. And so when you're in this lane, 
Oh, guys, this is actually the place that you need to live from. Are you with me? This is the place you need to live from. This is true for you from the beginning. It's, it's, what, it's the speed at which you can go. Are you with me? But it doesn't mean that people are comfortable going that speed. There are people who can go 120 that still prefer to go 60 because they're nervous about some things and they still need certain things developed in their lives. And we are here for you for that development. But we, we need to learn to live from the potential of the unseen, uncreated. Amen? Because you are seated with who? And is anything impossible to Jesus? So are all things possible to Him? Then are all things possible to you? Amen. So He's with you. So Mark 16, 17 to 18 says, And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. So you don't have to be afraid of demons. They have to be afraid of you. Did you hear what I said? No being scared of demons. Demons have no power over you. Jesus is King. And you don't need their name. You only need His name. Hallelujah. Jesus is King. Right. They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. Oh, hallelujah. What a blessing. Right? They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. This is not you go out to the Kruger National Park and find the most poisonous snake to prove that you're a Christian. This is not what this is talking about. It's talking about as you go... And you're about your business, the Father's business, preaching the gospel. A snake bites you. Don't let it bother you. Keep going. Jesus is king. Are you with me? If you sit down for a meal and someone poisons you to try and stop you, don't worry about it. Jesus has got you. Does it make sense? That's what that means. It doesn't mean you go and test the Lord. It means that when it happens, you utilize, it, it is utilized automatically because you're trusting Him. Amen? All right. And then, obviously, the part I want to get to, which is... And if it will not hurt them, they will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. Can you guys see there anything about might recover? Can you see anything there about perhaps one day? No, it says they will, right? That means it can happen immediately or it can happen over a period of time. But happen, it will happen. Why? If you do not doubt and shrink back, it will happen. It's about as simple as it gets. Amen? All right. So can you all just pick up your hands like this to me and look at them? Can you see your hands? You say, these hands belong to Jesus. These hands are healing hands. These hands are the leaves for the healing of the nations. Amen? Amen. So now you're operating from a place of knowing that God has provided for you, right? And if you don't, then you would be in this place. We call them the elders in James, right? So James 5, 14 to 15 says, If anyone among you is sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith, notice the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith is not the prayer of begging or the prayer of desperation. It's a prayer of faith. A prayer of faith is normally predicated on a promise. In other words, someone is praying, believing a promise to be true and declaring its truth and standing in the position of making it so. Does it make sense? Okay? It's not, it's not actually a conversation. It's more of a declaration when it comes to the prayer of faith. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. So sin couldn't even get in the way of that person's healing. Why? And why call for the elders? Because elders are normally elder. You know? Elder people. Are you with me? Okay, so if they elder people, then if they've been in the church community for a long time and they elder, it means that they are older and they're more experienced than you, which means that the chances of them getting this done quickly is a lot more, it, it's, it's a lot more possible. It's a very bad way of saying it, but anyway. It's a, it's a lot 
easier for them to do it because they've got more experience, is what I'm trying to say. And so if you're living from this place of divine health and you're living from the fastest lane, you're going to end up, and this is you know, level four, or, so not level four, lane four, where you're in this lane. If you're living from this lane, you're going to be able to get help when you need it and be help when someone else needs you. Amen? All right? And then we get to this lane. This is 120. Amen? How many of you want to know about 120? All right. The promise of the Word has become so part of your life, lifestyle, that, it's be, that it sustains your body constantly by the Spirit of God and everyone you touch is healed. In fact, you come into a room and people feel better. How many of you have come into a room and felt worse? Come on, let me see your hands. Have you ever come into a room and felt, what is this place? Ever? Or you pick up on something and you call it like a, a demonic spirit or an evil something, or you can pick up. Am I right? Anybody? All right. So, so if that is, if it's possible for you to be sensitive enough sensitive enough to pick up on that, then think, others are also feeling things that are coming into their environment the same way as you are feeling things coming into your environment. So if you carry that atmosphere of health because you're living in that place of health, then wherever you go, the life of God can flow to those around you. And I'm going to explain exactly why that is possible. Amen. Yes, of course. Hallelujah. Okay. In Romans chapter 8, verse 11, it tells us that if we've received the Spirit of Christ, right, then we're one of His. That's in verse, I think it's verse um, 8. And then the next verse says, in verse 10, it says there that even though the body, the physical body, is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Now consider, which do you have? Do you have a body who's dead of, from sin apart from the Spirit? Or do, you, or, or do you have the Spirit in you? Okay, so now recognizing that you have the Spirit in you is the first step. Because without having the Spirit of God, you can't be any of His. Am I right? And so it's important to recognize, yes, I am born again, I have the Spirit of God, and I have been sealed by the Holy Spirit for Him. Amen? All right. So now that we know we have this Spirit, the Bible in Romans is constantly making this argument that what Adam did was inferior to what Christ did. What Christ did was superior to what Adam did. But yet, what Adam did had such a huge negative impact on the world, and therefore... If what Christ did was greater than what Adam did, then the impact of righteousness on the earth through the obedience of Christ should be so much greater than that which Adam ever achieved in his disobedience. Okay? And so from that perspective, I want you to understand that God can only work for you and with you at the lane that you're willing to travel in. Amen? And so the more you believe things are not possible, that the more you are saying, okay, God, you can take care of this, I'll take care of that. The more you take care of stuff, the less He will force you to live according to His way. Because God doesn't insist on His own way. And the more you will be reliant on your own way, the more it will be out of your own strength rather than relying on the superabundance of His Spirit. The very spirit that brought you into existence is the very spirit that can sustain you, I would imagine. Amen. And so, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the spirit who dwells in you. Now, I wish I would have been smart enough to write this down. But this only came into existence through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul. 
when he was writing this. Amen. And I'm thankful for it because it gives us a very clear picture. Number one, it's not talking about your spiritual body. Otherwise, you, you wouldn't have mortal body there. Amen? It's talking about your physical mortal body. Do you see this thing? The Spirit of God is able to sustain it. Yo, that was amazing. I got like 10 people saying hello. The Spirit of God in you is able to sustain you. The Spirit of God in you is able to sustain you. That means that the same Spirit that brought the wrecked, destroyed, crucified body of Christ back into a living, animated existence is able to restore you. Come now. Because, guys, if we believe the gospel, we must at least believe that. Amen? Thus it is written, this is 1 Corinthians 15, 45. How does this Holy Spirit thing work? And I'm wrapping up right now. Because here's the thing, guys. When Jesus spoke to the woman at the well, He said to her, if anyone should ask me for water to drink, I will give them living water. And from their bellies will flow rivers of living water. And when he was talking about this, he was talking about the fact that when you drank from Christ, you would be transformed into a different kind of being. Okay? You would be changed the minute you got born again from a dam to a river. No longer grafted into Adam, but grafted into the river of God. Come on, that was a good joke. Verse 45 in 1 Corinthians 15 says, Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. In other words, a living soul. The last Adam, referring to Jesus, became a life-giving spirit. The best way to explain this is the difference between a dam that can be polluted and a river or a fountain that always pushes out anything that is pollutable. Because it flows. It's alive. Amen? And so now it says this is what's happened to, to us is that we've been grafted into Christ, the last Adam, right? So, but it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. And as was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. So if we have borne the image of Adam, and we have now been grafted out of Adam, and we've been grafted into Christ, we are now bearing the image of Christ. And this is the difference. In the Old Testament, if you were sick, it was stay away, stay away, cleansing, cleansing, Unclean, unclean. Everything was protective, protective. In the New Testament, Jesus comes and he hugs lepers and he does the most insane things. He's never afraid of catching anything. He's in every situation in the muck, bringing the Spirit into every situation and completely eradicating anything related to darkness and sickness and disease. That means that we have been commissioned. The Bible says in 1 John 4 that as He is, not as He was, not as He will be, but as He is right now, so are you in this world. It also encourages us to walk the way that Jesus walked. To have the same mind that was in Christ. To live not for ourselves, but for the benefit of those around us. Amen? And so when we... When we do this, when we begin to realize that I'm seated in Christ, God has already declared me healed and whole. My body is His temple. He's the one who keeps it. I am here as a steward of this life to make sure Christ can live through me. Then all of a sudden, your health is no longer an issue because it's in God's best interest to keep you around. Hallelujah. I want to challenge you. Go to 120. 
and let the life of God flow out of you in every conversation, in every room, in every situation. Even if you see someone sick and you just go up to him and you say, man, get well soon in Jesus' name. Amen? This morning, while I was praying, I felt the Lord saying that there are people here today that are suffering with many aches and pains, that are running you down, making you uncomfortable during the day, not able to do the things. It can be your back, it can be your knees, it can be your, back, your neck, it can be your shoulders, it can be any part. Can you please stand up? And those who are around them, every single person around them, you are a life-giving spirit. I want you to go and just lay your hands on them. And in your heart, all I want you to keep repeating and that you believe is that by his wounds, they were healed. Not they're going to be healed, not God, please heal them, not some sympathy trip. I want you to just keep declaring in your heart, by his wounds, they were healed. Okay? Just keep speaking that in your heart as I pray for everybody here. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I come against every weakness, every infirmity, every strategic plan of the enemy against any person's body in this room. And according to the laws of heaven, I declare your freedom today in Jesus' name be healed from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. Be whole. Every ache, every pain, go right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be free right now. And now, those of you who have received prayer, I want you to move around and check how it feels. Tell me. I want you to just put your hand up if it's gone. Not if it's better, if it's gone. Put your hand up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can we give Jesus a hand? Hallelujah. They did this piece of done. For those of you who, uh, who, are still, uh, who are still uncomfortable, the Lord is working in you. We didn't pray for nothing. Okay? By his wounds you were healed. Amen? So listen, this is something we can do all the time. Because every believer can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Amen. Thank you for your time. Bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good word. Thanks. Oh, let's let's uh, take th this message and allow it to bring renewal to the way we think about God. While Mark was speaking about the old covenant and the kind of pu putting bells around lepers' necks com in comparison to Jesus, who went and hugged them. What profoundly struck me was when Jesus said, if you want to know what God looks like, look at me. When you want to know what the Father looks like, don't, I'm just saying go and think about this. Don't, don't, don't get your brain too confused right now. Don't jump to too many conclusions. But just think about that. What was happening to the Israelites under the law as the word was already taking flesh in them through the rigorous demands of the law were fulfilled when the word became flesh and brought abundant supply and provision. And Jesus says, you want to know what that God looks like? Look at me. That will change everything about how you read the Bible. Thanks, Mark. Great word. Have a fantastic day. God bless.